G'day guys and welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Thanks for your patience this week guys. As you know, I'm studying for my exam so I had to cut True Footy Reacts from the weekly docket. I can't guarantee that we'll be back next Monday either because that's the day of my exam but I am playing a few different ideas for content coming up in the next couple of weeks. I'm thinking of doing a video where I release my mid-season All-Australian team and I might even do an end-of-season ladder prediction as well. I'm also pretty confident we're going to get True Footy Podcast 32 out to you guys sometime in the next couple of weeks before I go to Europe for a month. I have said it before on the channel, but if you didn't know, I'm going to Europe for all of July. I will be taking my microphone and I might do a couple of different styles of content while I'm away, but it might not be in the usual format. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, guys, let's have a look at round 13 and who True Footy is tipping. The first game of the week is Adelaide taking on Richmond at Adelaide Oval. Now, last week was a massive win for the Crows against quality opposition. With two recent losses against the Lions and the Eagles, I think it was really important for the Crows to notch up a win against a fellow top four contender. By doing so, they've kept themselves in touch with the top four, especially since the Eagles lost to Sydney in Sydney last week. The Crouch brothers led the way for the midfielders last week, with Sloan being well held for three quarters. In a big plus for them, out of favour forward Josh Jenkins bobbed up for three goals to back up last week's promising effort. For Richmond, this game looms as an important one as well. In consecutive weeks, the Tigers have been swept aside by North Melbourne and then Geelong, and their percentage has taken a hit as a result of it. Amazingly, their percentage has dropped to less than 95%. This means they can ill afford to drop any more winnable games this season. Their track record against the Crows in Adelaide isn't great. They've lost the last three by at least six goals and lost by 76 points to them in their premiership year. This looms as a really tough fixture for the Tigers and if they fail to win here, they could slide out of the top eight. I do think Richmond will put in an improved performance this week, but I don't trust them enough to tip them against Adelaide in Adelaide. I'm going to tip Adelaide to keep the pressure mounting on Richmond this week and win by 27 points. Our second game of the round is Essendon taking on Hawthorne at the MCG. Both of these sides come into this game game coming off the bye, which means they've had a good opportunity to take stock of their season. Both sides currently sit 10th and 11th respectively on the ladder, and at this stage it is highly possible they're competing for the same top 8 spot by the end of the year. The Bombers went into the bye with some typically mixed form, although they would have got a bit of confidence beating the Blues by so much the week before. The Bombers had a day out that day, and Dyson Heppel led the way with 36 possessions and a goal. This week they'll need to overcome a poor recent record against the Hawks, who have beaten them 4 out of the last 5 times. The Hawks went into the bye coming off a close, tough loss against the Lions at the Gabba. Hawthorne have always shown this ability to be able to extract every ounce of talent out of a player and I think that's happening again here with Ricky Henderson. Henderson has taken a leading role in Hawthorne's midfield this year and his last month has consisted of two games of over 35 possessions and three of over 30. This game almost has a mini final vibe about it and it's you could say it's at least an eight point game with both of these sides so close on the ladder. I'm really not too sure who to tip here but I think I'm going to go with the Hawks due to their good recent record over Essendon and also the fact that Essendon are fairly inconsistent in big games. I'm going to tip the Hawks to win a thriller here by four points. The third game is Gold Coast hosting St Kilda up at Metricon Stadium. After a promising start to the year, it does appear that slowly the Suns are slipping further and further off the pace of the competition. Two weeks ago, they were absolutely belted by GWS, and last week they were beaten by North in a game where the scoreline probably actually flattered Gold Coast. To be fair to the Suns, they have come up against some quality teams lately, and I include North Melbourne in that, who are playing some really good footy. They've proven to be a really gritty side this year, and I'm interested to see how they motivate themselves for a game where they're a really chance of winning. For the Saints, this will be their first game since their hapless trip to China where they were belted by Port by 70 points. Jay Gresham was big in that game, as was Rowan Marshall, who's continuing a great season, but other than that, there weren't too many shiny lights out of that game. Like the Suns, I think the Saints have kind of lost a little bit of momentum after a really good start to the season. Perhaps the bye will refresh the side, but I think this game is a bit of a must win for St Kilda in the context of their season. Round one saw a thriller between these two sides, and I'm tipping the same again. I think St Kilda win this game by seven points. Next up is Fremantle hosting Port Adelaide at Optus Stadium in Perth. Now, the Dockers went into their bye last week in the best possible form, knocking off Collingwood at the MCG. It's their second big scalp away from home this year, and I think that people need to start taking them more seriously as a potential finalist. What will count against the Dockers, though, is their cruel injury run. Up until this season, the Dockers have been criticised for having poor key position talent. I think they've rectified this to some extent, but in recent weeks have copped season-ending injuries to Alex Pierce, Rory Lobb, and Matt Taverner. The Dockers are getting a lot out of their main experienced players like Fire, Mundy, Brad Hill, and Michael Walters. With those tall guys I named out of the side now, Fremantle really need to demand more from their second tier players. The power, on the other hand, went into the bye with a convincing percentage boosting win over St Kilda. They've been hit hard with the injury stick this year, although it does appear Tom Rockliffe is a test to come back, and Charlie Dixon looks set to be available to play as well. Like the Essendon Hawthorne game, this game looms as a potential mini final, and I don't think it's any guarantee that both of these sides play finals this year. Port's last trip to Perth was a sweet one. They 
trounced the Eagles by nine goals earlier this year. Although on the other hand, Fremantle beat them in Perth last year. This game has me torn. I think in my head, I want to say Fremantle is going to win, but I can't help but feel that Port are going to take this opportunity to absolutely turn it on. And I think they're going to win this game by 18 points. The penultimate game of the round is Carlton hosting the Western Bulldogs at Marvel Stadium. Last week, we witnessed the Pat Cripp show as Carlton fulfilled the old cliche of a struggling team winning with their first game under a new coach. Cripps had 38 possessions to go with his four goals last week and definitely answered his critics after a few disappointing weeks in a row. It's interesting to consider where Pat Cripps sits exactly in the conversation for who is the best player in the AFL. What you can say though is, Pat Cripps is one of those rare players in the league who can single-handedly lift his side into a winning position. In fact, he's been doing it for years. After a few weeks in a row of really poor effort, the Blues had to claw back a 37-point deficit against the Lions to beat them at Marvel. Now they return to the scene of their first win of the season against the Doggies at Marvel Stadium again. Now I'm sure the Doggies will be pleased that they've shaken the tag of the only team to lose to Carlton this year. Nonetheless, I think they will be determined to get revenge in this game. Since they beat the Lions in Ballarat earlier this year, the Dogs have faced three tough opponents in a row and were soundly beaten each time. I think they'll be refreshed after their bye and will go into this game relishing an opportunity to beat a team lower than them. They do have a number of players who are facing fitness tests to come back in this week. Hayden Crozier, Dale Morris and Taylor Duray. I reckon the Dogs will fancy themselves here and I think they'll get the revenge over the Blues and win by 32 points. The final game of the round is an intriguing one between North Melbourne and GWS down at Blundstone Arena. I've talked about this before but North's run of form has really impressed me in the last month. In my opinion, they're playing the caliber of football we expected them to play earlier this year, which was that of a finals contending team. They may have left their run a little bit late however, they currently sit 12th on the ladder with 5 wins and 7 losses. As a team, they've definitely improved, in particular their ball movement and their skill level. However, individually, Jack Zeeble has had a really big month as well. The Roos are a hard team to beat down at Hobart and I reckon the Giants are getting them at a bad time. The Giants face the unenviable task of having to travel interstate two weeks in a row after they lost to the Crows in Adelaide just last week. It's a loss they will rue as they dominated that game for large patches of the game but couldn't put it on the scoreboard. They are still entrenched in the top four but losing last week puts a little bit more pressure on this game. If they drop this game they could find themselves potentially level on points with Adelaide going into their bye. Like I've said recently I do rate the Giants as one of the absolute best sides of the competition however I actually reckon this week will be a very tough ask for them. I'm going to tip the Roos in an upset this week. They're going to beat the Giants by 13 points. Anyway guys, that's all the games we have in round 13. Realistically, I probably won't be able to put out any content on either of my channels until maybe the middle of next week. So please don't miss me too much. Just kidding, but if you are in the mood for some AFL content, I was actually a guest on the Ruck Rover podcast on the weekend. They're not on YouTube yet, but if you're keen to check it out, you should download it on any podcast app. You can also follow the Ruck Rover podcast on Instagram. In the interview, we talk about how I started the channel, where the Eagles are at this year, and then we share our mid-season All-Australian teams. They make quality content, so I do highly recommend checking them out. For now though, guys, I gotta get back to studying, but thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon on the True Footy YouTube channel. Cheers.